Don, it's a reflection of the importance of consciousness, but maybe the desperation of certain scientists, that several are going to the level of quantum physics to try to explain consciousness. Why do they do that? Well, on the one hand, it is our deepest science, and it's our most worked out, and so we have good foundations there. But we've not been able to figure out how to connect consciousness to neural activity at the higher levels, at synaptic levels, uh, ions crossing membranes. We haven't been able to do it Neural there. circuitry. Neural circuitry, that's all right. Systems of neurons firing. Um, so we, we haven't been able to do it successfully there. And so then the idea is, well, maybe something at the quantum level, which is very, very basic physics. Uh, you know, there are aspects of quantum mechanics where the observer seems to be playing a role. Wigner and von Neumann brought consciousness in themselves when they were talking about, about quantum theory, and they were not, they were you know, smart guys. <laughs> yeah. So several researchers, and that I include uh, Minas Kafatos and Henry Staff and um, Roger Penrose and Stuart Hameroff, these researchers are starting to look at quantum mechanical levels of, of brain activity. And for example, Hameroff and Penrose are looking at um, quantum coherence in microtubules and um, you know, collapse of, of the quantum wave function uh, according to some you know, advanced physical principles that Roger Penrose has, has worked out. And these are you know, very interesting directions to go. But no one has yet expelled the magic. And they, they have quantum properties, collapse of quantum coherence, but I think people who aren't they're in their camps still have the question, what in the collapse of quantum coherence and microtubules gives rise to consciousness? Maybe quantum states are global and there's something about consciousness that's global, but can we make a more definite connection between, between them? And, and in particular, why should this collapse in this microtubule be the experience of the smell of a rose? Why couldn't it be the taste of garlic? There, there's no attempt in any of these theories to be to have the kind of precision that we really want from a scientific theory of consciousness. We want a mathematically precise theory that says these, if we're, if we're going to do it from quantum mechanics or physical properties of the brain, that says these quantum properties or these physical properties of the brain must produce these kinds of qualia, these kinds of conscious experiences. This coherence has to be, or, or this collapse, has to be the taste of a strawberry. It could not be the sound of a trumpet for these mathematically precise reasons. We it's the same issue theories. when you have a neuron and a, a synapse of a neuron at a much higher uh, order of magnitude and size. It's That's the right. same issue. It's absolutely, we've gone down even to what you might call the Planck scale, which is like 10 to the <laughs> thir minus 35 meters. Yeah. Really, really small where physicists think it doesn't get any smaller, space time itself breaks up into little, yeah. you know, it's, it's no longer smooth, it breaks up. But it's the same problem at that scale as at you know the scale of neurons you know whole neurons or systems of neurons and that is how to bridge the gap from the physical properties of the system to the quality in a principled way i mean let's not fool ourselves we want we're scientists we want a precise theory that makes precise predictions it says this physical property must be this quality and we'll tell you why it has to be the taste of chocolate it has to be the taste of chocolate for these reasons and if you make these small changes in the physics, then it will be you know, the taste of a strawberry, and, and it's for these precise reasons. People in the field who, who hear me saying this would go, we're nowhere near that. I mean, there's, there's nothing like that in our field. And because we, we have no clue yet how to go remotely from physical stuff, even at the quantum level, to the true properties of, of, of you know, consciousness, qualium. So it's, it's um, again, we're in a position where there really are no genuine scientific theories. Which is not to say we shouldn't try, I mean, it's happy hunting in the quantum world. Let's look and see if we can find some ideas. But let's not fool ourselves. We don't yet have a theory. Do you think it's even conceivably possible that activity uh, on the quantum level, which is so many orders of magnitude below what's happening in the synapse between neurons, where most people think uh, uh, the learning and memory and cognition takes place, do you think that's even in principle logical? That we could bridge a gap all the way from yes. the from the two. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think. That, I, mean, I think most scientists think that there is going to be a con consistent story that ties physics at all levels together, 
from the Planck level all the way up. Well, to but the same is true in this table, right? Because the same physics of the Planck level is uh, in the quantum collapse. That's what causes every matter in the world. Right. The question is: Is there something unique in the consciousness part, where it happens in the brain, right. or microtubules uh, within uh, neurons, that uniquely causes consciousness? That's the challenge. That, that's the fair point, and and there the challenge is: we don't even know at what level to to try to answer this question. Just, I mean, Planck scale is 10 to the minus 35 meters. That's really, really small. Neurons are 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 enormous compared, and everything in between is fair game. So that shows how, you know. We're shooting in the dark in some sense. Mm. Is it spiking rates of neurons? Is that what causes consciousness? Or the systems of spiking, you know, com complex integrated systems of spiking neurons, is that the level? Or we're guessing all the way down to 10 to the minus 35 meters and activity down there. What that really says is we're throwing a dart at yeah. the board right now. We don't know where to, but, and, and we have to. I mean, you know, I'm not criticizing. I mean, we have to, you know, we don't have an answer, so everybody's got to start searching wherever we can. But it shows we, what we can't do is claim that we've got a theory. And, and you've done the reverse, though. Right. You've looked at uh, not just the quantum physics of consciousness, but you're saying, that's not working, but can I go the other way? That's right. So you can try to get consciousness out of quantum physics, and I'm taking the opposite approach. I'm saying, I could be wrong, but let's try it. Let's get a mathematically precise theory of consciousness. And then let's see, without any hand waves or miracles, can we get quantum mechanics coming out of it? And I think we can. So I've, I've been working with a mathematical physicist and mathematician, and we have, um, you know, we can get the quantum wave function of a free particle from a dynamics of con what we call conscious agents. So in principle, it is possible. Well, I may be very old fashioned. But as uh, astonished as I was that some people are using quantum physics to explain consciousness, I am even more astonished that you are trying to derive quantum physics from a mathematically precise uh, uh, a structure of, of consciousness. I find that uh, fabulous in all the negative connotations of the word. I, I, I certainly understand. And so the burden is on me to have a mathematically precise theory. Um, so I do have a mathematically precise theory of conscious, what I call conscious agents involving um, things called Markovian kernels and so forth. But um, the real proof of the pudding is can I actually get, for example, um, spinners in quantum mm -hmm. mechanics? Can I get uh, Penrose's spin nets coming out? Can I make new physical predictions that current physical theory cannot make? Right now, the connection between consciousness and physics that I'm looking at, it appears that the long-term properties of my dynamics, what was called the asymptotics, uh, is what physics is dealing with. In which case, physics as we know it would be the special case of the conscious dynamics as what you might call the time parameter goes to infinity. In the same way that classical physics um, comes out as the limit of relativity as the speed of light goes to infinity or as, you know, in the case of quantum mechanics, as, as Planck's constant goes to zero, you get classical mechanics coming out. So my idea would then to, would be, in a similar fashion, to get quantum theory, quantum theory and relativity coming out as a special case of the conscious dynamics, as a limiting case as my time parameter, my quote unquote, it's not really time, but it's the dynamical parameter of my system goes to infinity. The asymptotics of my dynamics ends up being the physics. That's, that's the goal. So, but the nice thing is, it's not a, oh, it's not a hand wave, it's a precise attempt.